They're probably the biggest symbol of the importance of protecting the planet, and they also actually play a huge role in stopping climate change. But trees are more than just a tool to help the human species survive. They're, of course, living beings themselves. Some even argue that they're capable of communicating, nurturing, learning, maybe even showing tribal loyalties. For more on this, Peter Volubin joins me on set for Perspective. He's a forester and the author of The Hidden Lives of Trees, which was just published in its graphic novel version uh, here in France. And it explores the idea that the world's array of woody plants might just have more in common with humans uh, than you think. Peter, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, so I know you don't like to be called a tree whisperer, if, if I understand correctly, but you have indeed embarked upon a rather passionate, driven career uh, in studying trees. So what sparked uh, such a deep interest? Um, I don't know. Perhaps I'm the green sheep of the family because my father worked in the Minister of Finance, my mother worked in the hospital, and I raised up in the former capital of Germany in Bonn. So, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> surprising, su surprising fashion then. Um, so in your, in your research, uh, well, what is the, 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 the basic tenet of your research? And uh, what are some of the human-like characteristics that you find uh, trees have? Yeah, we all, always uh, think that nature invented intelligence, uh, social systems for just one species for us. But in reality, it turns out that it is a principle of nature. And we can see this perfectly on trees. Uh, uh, there are mother trees. Uh, beside that, that's a technical term, old technical term from Germany, uh, uh, which cares for their offspring, uh, which helps uh, uh, weak um, other trees to stabilize the whole forest because an intact forest can create its own weather. Deep, deep depression areas, for example, with clouds can cre create actively rain, can, can cool down the local atmosphere around about 10 to 15 degrees Celsius because trees uh, luckily have the same uh, same aims than, that we have. Uh, they don't like it too hot and they don't like it too dry. So how are uh, how do you measure some of the kind of anthropomorphic characteristics of trees? Things like communication. I know you talk about how they have yeah. some form of, of, of tr tribal loyalty, how they want to push others out that are not welcome in the clan. How, how do you actually measure these things? Uh, for example, communication, it's very easy to measure. Um, there uh, are recent studies, for example, from the University of Leipzig that trees are even communicate with animals to call them for help. For example, uh, oak trees, which are in, infested by um, uh, caterpillars, they call birds for help and then the birds uh, come in and feed on those caterpillars and the trees get rid of it. And um, we see that, uh, that trees are connected through the root system, for example, and even uh, support old stumps, which are uh, from trees uh, which uh, have been felled four or five hundred years ago. So they try to keep the community together. What, what is a, a call for help from a tree to a caterpillar look like? How does that manifest? Uh, it's it's uh, with a sense. Um, so the, the, the birds can smell this. And so it's a call. But um, on the other hand, um, plants in general are also um, able to communicate via sound. For example, with roots, then they make click sounds and other roots are orientating in this direction. Uh, they can hear water flowing in the underground. It's a sound around about 200 hertz. So it's also about sound, but in many cases about scent. Um, a lot of some of the most complex uh, lives of trees actually happens underground linked to a, a network of fungi. Can you talk more about this? This is what I found most, most fascinating. Yeah, that's very interesting because fungi, um, they are in between plants and animals. They are more animals than plants. And they, they need tree sugar and therefore they need to deliver something. And that may be um, support, um, that, that may be news, that may be uh, the transportation of nutrition to, to other trees. So they are something in between uh, the internet and a delivery service. Um, uh, how, do, how have these discoveries changed your relationship, uh, perhaps to nature in general, and of course to trees specifically, and what do you hope to see done with this information? Yeah. Um, for me, um, it's obvious that nature is more about uh, cooperation than competition. And that's exactly what we see for uh, our human society. That seems to be uh, a metaphor, but no, it's a natural rule. And we see it in um, uh, human societies where there is more about competition than cooperation, they fall apart. So uh, that's exactly what we see nowadays, that we in need of more cooperation. And we see trees are very good in this, and trees are even better in something. They make their ecosystem better in using it. 
and we are destroying and using it. So we should become a little bit more like trees. Um, earlier this year, you also published The Power of Trees, focusing on the role that they play in the cri climate tri crisis. You would think that the more we plant, the more we plant trees, the better. It's something that you see in, in, in green advertising campaigns for every you know, item bought, we'll, we'll plant a tree. But you actually argue that this is not necessarily a good thing. What are some of the dangers of, of planting too many trees? Uh, no, it, it's it's not not a danger. But when if we think we can uh, go on with uh, consuming all those things and just planting trees and they care for the damage, no, that's not working. Uh, and in many cases, uh, the forest can come back without any help. We do too much and we can't create forests. We can just plant trees, which is good in cities like Paris, for example. But uh, outside in nature, in most cases, we should leave the job uh, to the trees because they are better in this. And we haven't understood. So, so far, what's exactly going on in forest? Uh, how concerned are you about the scale of, of deforestation, either in Germany or, or elsewhere? I'm very concerned um, because uh, it's an overuse and uh, we uh, use more and more timber for burning purposes, for example, to replace uh, coal in power plants uh, with timber. And that's a very bad idea. Um, we should reduce timber consumption. Timber is a wonderful stuff. Uh, I like wooden things, houses or whatsoever. But uh, to replace coal and oil with wood, that's not a good idea. Peter uh, Volobin, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much again for coming on France 24 today. And as a reminder to our French-speaking uh, viewers, his, uh, his, his book, uh, The Hidden Life of Trees, is out in a graphic novel version uh, here in France. It's, it's a beautiful version, uh, if you can see it there. Uh, Peter, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, time now.